Hey there YouTube, so in this video I wanted to go over the tax consequences of a foreign company or foreign person that opens a US bank account. Right? So if you're a foreign corporation or a non-resident individual and you, you open a US account, what does that mean tax-wise? Are you now subject to federal taxes? What are the rules? What are the disclosure requirements? And the reason I want to do this video is because there's a lot of horrible information floating around out there that suggests as soon as you open a U.S. account, now you're automatically subject to U.S. federal taxes. Maybe just the income that's deposited in, into the account or your total income. And so what I want to do is go through the rules, dispel some of those myths, and try to help you save some taxes and some annual reporting requirements. So. Uh, the first issue is what types of non-US persons or companies are actually subject to federal taxes and what are the standards? So when you're a non-resident, you're not living in the US, um, you're generally only subject to US tax in one of two ways. So the first one is if your company, your foreign company or you as an individual are engaged in US trader business and you have U.S. source income that is effectively connected with that U.S. trader business, right? So that's the first method. The second one is, are you a non-U.S. person and you're invested in U.S. assets that generate fixed, determinable, annual, or periodical income? Or the IRS, for short, just refers to this as FEDAP income. So this includes U.S. source interest income, dividends, rents, royalties, there's a number of other types of payments that would qualify, but these are the big ones that we see normally in practice. Interest and dividends, by far the number one. Royalties as well. So those are the two methods that a non-resident could be subject to tax. Okay? So if we revisit the first one, what does it mean to be engaged in U.S. trader business? Engaged in trader business in the U.S. means that the foreign company or the foreign person is conducting so much activity in the US that the level of activity is considerable, continuous, and regular. Now, that is pretty vague, and I agree, it is vague, and that's the standard under the tax code. The Internal Revenue Code, the IRS, they have not specifically defined what this means to be engaged in US trader business. Up until this point, we're just relying on what kind of limited treasury regulations we have, what kind of tax court cases we have. But it does mean that you are involved, not so much in that you just have US customers, but that you have maybe a US office, you have some US employees or US dependent agents, and you're conducting enough business to where it looks like, okay, you're, you are an actual trader business that operates almost exclusively within the United States. Right, and so that is the standard that the IRS is using right now. Generally, well, I shouldn't just say general, I mean definitely, if you're not doing any business in the US other than just having a US account, that will not create a US trader business. And this is further, further illustrated with the trading safe harbor, which I have there noted below and highlighted. So under 864B2, um, a foreign company is engaged in U.S. trader business uh, aside from a couple exceptions, right? So if you look at Section 864B, you're going to see that they list out a number of exceptions for if this is your only activity in the U.S., this does not constitute a U.S. trader business. And one of those exceptions is what's called the trading safe harbor, where you can have a foreign person or foreign company buy and sell stocks in the U.S., trade bonds, interest -bearing, uh, other interest-bearing investments, and that activity alone does not create a U.S. trader business. So the logic follows that um, if you have a company that only has a U.S. bank account, so they have a custodian that holds, holds your U.S. bank account, very similar to having a custodial relationship with, let's say, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, JP Morgan, where they're holding custody of your stocks and bonds. If you just have a banking relationship in the U.S., that does not create a U.S. trader business, right? So that falls underneath, kind of underneath the umbrella of the trading safe harbor. If you can trade stocks and bonds in the U.S. and not be subject to the um, 
U.S. Trader Business Standard, then you can certainly have a U.S. bank account and not fall into that trap of U.S. Trader Business risk. Okay. Um, so yeah. So again, the tr the checking account is not an issue. If you're a foreign company or a foreign person and you have a U.S. account. That in and of itself does not mean you're engaged in U.S. trader business. Now, the analysis doesn't stop, right? You have to actually look at the activities of your company. Do you have U.S. customers? Do you have U.S. employees? Do you have U.S. dependent agents? Um, do you have a U.S. office, right? I mean, even if it's a virtual office. Those are the factors that come into play when determining whether you're engaged in trader business in the U.S. and have U.S. source ECI. The checking account is not. So go ahead, if you're a non-US person or company, go ahead and set up that US checking account if you need it for business purposes. That is not the problem. You need to look beyond that at the other activities conducted by the company to determine whether you're subject to tax. So that's the long and the short of it. Hope that was helpful um, and dispelled some of those myths out there about you know, opening a US account automatically makes you subject to tax. That's nonsense. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you for watching and listening. Very much appreciate if you can give the video a like. Um, of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so and stay up to date on kind of all these other videos I put out regarding these kind of issues. And um, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much again for watching. Bye.